Hello, this is a first in a series of lectures about fault current interruption. This one is about terminal fault. In order to, to make the case, I will use my simulator. You can also use the same simulator under this address. If you haven't used it yet, there is a user's guide uh, on YouTube under this address here. In order to simplify the case, I will first use only a single phase model. What you can hit, see here is a source. And here you have the oscillation characteristic of the network, of the source side of the network. Here is a breaker, and then you have a transmission line. In this lesson, we will first look at the terminal fault. The terminal fault is a fault which happens directly at a breaker. And the terminal fault normally gives rise to the most severe short current fault levels. As soon as there is such a fault, a very high current will flow from the fault location to the source and back to the fault location. So this is a very high short circuit current. It can reach up to 80 kiloamps. In substations, there are relays and these relays are permanently measuring the current. As soon as the current is uh, higher uh, than normal, the relay sends a trip to the breaker and the breaker uh, opens the contacts and interrupts the current. Let's now go to the simulator on Google. It's ecsp.ch. So this is now the simulator. Before I start, I want to see the values of the element, so I switch this one on. So I will set the values so that I can simulate a 230 kilovolt network. I always have to take the peak values, and I would assume a short circuit current of around about 50 kiloamps. Before I add the breaker and initiate the short circuit, I just want to check the transient oscillation behavior of the source circuit. So let's go into the simulation mode and let's check where we are. So I would like to have a more, more oscillation at the beginning. So in this case, I probably have to reduce damp the damper a little bit. And I want also to increase slightly the frequency so this is probably more or less right and uh, let's see where we are now i want to have a better look at my transient it's the transient recovery voltage trv so let's go to a shorter simulation time and let's see where we are according to the standard my transient recovery voltage the trv the trv must have a rate of rise of around about 2 kilovolts per microsecond and a peak of 1.4 to 1.5. Uh, here I'm now at the rate of rise of around about 0.6 and therefore I have to increase the slope of this TRV by having this point instead of here, around about here, means I need to increase the frequency. That's what I try to do now. I reduce the delay time. I further increase the frequency. And now you see that I have to improve the damping as well slightly. And now I am more or less where I should be. Let's test the case now with a better time. So this is now how my TRV, my standard TRV would look like in a 20 millisecond time interval. So my TRV is now set. Let's now add the breaker and initiate the short circuit current. So here is now my breaker and you see that there is a short circuit just after the breaker. I want to measure the current first through the breaker and see how the short circuit will look like without the brake to open. So what you see here is the source voltage and what you see here is the current through the breaker. 
So first of all, I want, would like my breaker to interrupt the current after one full cycle means it should be here. And therefore I have to change the time resolution slightly. I go to 30 milliseconds total simulation time. This is how it looks like now. Let's now set the timing of the breaker so that it can interrupt the current after the first full cycle here. So that means I would ask the break to separate the contacts uh, well before that means run about here after 15 milliseconds. So let's stop this, go to the breaker. And uh, first of all, we have to make sure that the breaker opens only after current zero. So let's put this one on yes and then ask the break to open after 15 uh, millisecond contact separation. So I put here 15 and let's see what happens then. And I also want to see the voltage across the breaker. So yes, you see contact separation right about here. And here the breaker is able to interrupt the current and this is now this uh, transient recovery voltage across the breaker. And this is really stressing the breaker very much. So let's change the settings of the breaker again. So we would go to a restrike level of let's say 250 kilovolts. This is somewhere in this TRV. And again I would close the breaker and let it open the contacts after 15 milliseconds and let's see what happens now. Ah, so first of all you see that the breaker fails, but there is a very high frequency oscillation afterwards. This is a mathematical oscillation and this is due to the fact that you have basically just a capacitor which is discharged into a short circuit. Therefore, I have to add something there, or I can also remove the capacitor. Doesn't change a lot. So let's remove it and let's repeat it and see what happens now. So you can see now that the current is just continued to flow after the restrike, it is continuing to flow. So the breaker failed, it was not able to interrupt the short circuit. So Maybe it has another chance here, but otherwise, if it doesn't take this one, the breaker has failed. In reality, we do not have such a simple single phase network. We have a three phase system. And in a three phase system, there is another uh, issue. You have the so-called first pole to clear factor. Here you see the voltages of the three phases. And the first pole clear factor is normally 1.3 to 1.5. So that means that the TRV of the first pole to clear is uh, 1.3 to 1.5 times higher than just the single phase TRV we have simulated before. So we will also simulate the three phase case uh, just here. So if you want to go for a three phase simulation, you would have to register. If your register is already, you can just start there. Otherwise, you have to register. It's just a 20 francs fee per year. It's very cheap. Then we assemble our network. In order to tune the transient recovery TRV first, I replace the breaker by a high ohmic resistor, uh, several giga ohms. And then I fine tune the TRV as follows. The TRV is now ready and now I replace the measurement ohmic resistance by the breaker. As before, I set the timing of the breaker right. And then I start the simulation. Oops, I can see that there is no first port to clear factor. This is due to the fact that I forgot to remove this grounding arrow there. I do that now. Here you can now clearly see that the first TRV is 1.5 times higher. This is due to the fact that the short circuit is not against ground, but it is a non-grounded short circuit just between the individual phases. 
and here you can see how the TRV of the first pole to clear is 1.5 and as soon as the first pole is cleared the other TRVs of the two sub subsequent phases uh, which are interrupted around about 5 to 8 milliseconds later uh, they have just the first uh, pole to clear factor of 1. As usual you can go to the web page under the following address it's a unique experience you will learn a lot about how the grid works, you will never forget it.